SIG Energy solar system installation with full home backup and battery storage. That's what we're going to be looking at today in another first class solar installation by Alps Electrical. Don't go anywhere, let's get to it. Hey, and welcome back to another Alps Electrical installation video where we are in a place called Nunthorpe in Middlesbrough in this beautiful, fairly new build estate. Now, before I start, I must address the elephant in the room. No, not me, that I haven't posted a video in a little while. It's been a few months and I'm so sorry, but the reason for that is simply because we have just gone through what has been the busiest period we've ever known at Alps Electrical, in particular for solar and EV installations, and it shows no sign of slowing. So it's been crazy busy, but obviously we're not complaining, um, but I have had to make sure that we've got the logistics in place to ensure that we have the same superb quality of service that all of our customers have came to expect and appreciate. And I can now get back to what I do best. So I put down the tools and pick up the camera. So with that being said, this is the job behind me and it has all actually been done just a few weeks ago. And so now I've come back, I'm gonna show you around, talk you through the job as we look back at the installation footage that was taken by the guys and go through what we think of the fantastic SIG Energy system. Now, as you know, if you watch our videos, we do install all the different brands of solar and EV chargers. Um, if you're looking at full home backup, you're gonna be really looking at the Tesla or SIG Energy. So we've installed loads of Tesla over the years with the Powerwall 2 and now the Powerwall 3 for customers who are after the full home backup feature. Um, but recently SIG Energy has come to the market and it's taken the market by storm. And we've installed lots of SIG Energy lately and have to say it's a cracking piece of kit with its stackable batteries, full home backup and a really snazzy app. It definitely gives Tesla a run for the money. And a little later, we'll be asking Brad to show us around the components and explain a little bit about why he thinks SIG Energy is a great system to install. So for now, let's go and take a look at how the team got on a few weeks ago and have a look at this job. Okay, so you might have noticed my new electric vans, uh, the VW ID Buzz. We absolutely love these cracking pieces of kit. And of course, with us being a renewables company, we're practicing what we preach because we've gone green. So yeah, love them. So one of the things that we really had to consider here was the location of the equipment. Now, this customer was uh, debating over Tesla or SIG Energy. Um, the one thing he definitely wanted was the full home backup. So really, those are your two choices. Um, now we needed to look at location of equipment. There was an option whether we could put it in the garage, although most of this garage is a gym and he's got a short little bit at the front here uh, where he could have had them. We were looking to put them on this side. But in the end, um, he thought, well, he might have to put the kids' bikes in there and things and they're gonna be kind of in the way. The other place we were looking at then was, um, just in here, which was going to go here, but he likes to put his wheelie bins here and he, would, he was going to move this over and put this on the other side. And we've also got the uh, outside tap. So this one wasn't ideal. So then the customer said, hey, what about if we put it around this side of the property? Because we don't really use this space. So as you can see, just over the fence there, that's where we ended up putting everything. And it's absolutely ideal because it's out of the way. No one can touch it, get to it, knock it or bash it or reverse into it. Um, so yeah, that was ideal. The only thing that that meant, obviously with it having the gateway is that we have to bring a big cable all the way from the meter cupboard over here because with the gateways, you come in from the main cutout in the meter cupboard 
and then you're coming through the gateway and back to the customer's main consumer unit. So what we've done is, and this is the way we usually do it, if we've got a big long run like this and the gateway's going quite a distance from the meter cupboard, we can use a four core armoured. Um, and what we do there is this one is a 25 mil four core. You can see the big one at the top there. So that's a 25 mil four core armoured. And obviously we use the uh, armouring for the earth. And then we'll use two of the cars to come this way and two of the cars are going back. So it's just one cable effectively, but it's a big one. It's not very malleable, but the lads, as you can see there, have done a superb job of clipping it through the garage. And the other thing we had to do was get it across. There's actually a four inch duct already in here with a few cables going through it. And we were a bit unsure whether we were going to be able to get ours through because not only did we have our 25 mil four car going that way, but then obviously we have our solar cables coming back to get up to the panels. And as you can see there, we've used our PV Ultra cable. We've used a, a four car, which is this one, and a two car, because we've got the three strings. So there's six cables in total uh, to do the three strings. And this is great, this cable, because it covers all of the regs. Um, it means that you don't have to worry about conduit. It clips beautifully up the wall. Um, and also it's already labelled with the warnings that are required by the regulations about uh, being live during daylight hours. So love this cable. It's not the cheapest, but it does save on labour time. So yeah, but apparently when the lads were here, they said that this went through an absolute treat. So all good. So the other thing we had to consider on this job was the EV chargers that the customer already had in place. Now, one of them he got for free so he obviously only needed one but one was free so he said well you might as well put it in then so i believe this one might be fed from the board in the garage whereas the other one is fed from this consumer unit over here so this was all put in before we got here so this is the second one that's fed straight off the mains via the henley blocks so what it allowed us to do was to keep one of these chargers invisible to the solar basically so that the customer um you know could plug his car in benefit from the octopus overnight rate and not worry about it pulling from the solar or the battery whereas the other charger because it's fed from a board after here downstream basically um it means that if the solar and the battery will see that one so it just means that Say if the customer, for example, was going on a long journey and the sun was blaring uh, and he just really needed some charge, rather than plug it in and pull from the grid, he could plug it into his charger that can be seen from the solar and he would be able to charge it. Gives him best of both worlds. So it was just something that we could help manipulate, which is just um, you know an added bonus for the customer. As you can see, before we came as well, there was a real rough earth put in here by whoever put this charger in. But as you can see there, my lads have done a lovely job of sorting that out. It's still there, but it's running through the conduit and everything. So lads have done a lovely job of that. But just to explain in here then, so we have installed a second Henley block uh, and we needed to do that so that we could make sure that the solar could not see this EV. So coming from the DNO, You've got uh, your cable coming in through your 100 amp fuse, through your smart meter, out into your 100 amp isolator, out into the Henley block that we've installed. And then we put the, the tails that are feeding this charger into our Henley block. And then we've got a blue and brown that are supplying our board here. So they're going straight into this isolator, which is then supplying that switch fuse. And then from the switch fuse, you can see we've got our big 25 mil four car armored here. So from there, we're using our blue and brown going to the gateway that we've showed you on the other side of the garage. And then it's coming back on the black and gray up here into those two Henley blocks there, which is then feeding the house and of course the garage and everything else that's on from there. So in the event of a power cut, the gateway will kick in and obviously the batteries will take over and then the supply will run back through the black and grey, effectively lab neutral, straight into here and supply the house.
So apologies for the dogs um, behind me. They are currently wondering why on earth there's three blokes all dressed in black in their back garden. So um, they will possibly be barking for the next couple of minutes. <laughs> so uh, anyway, as you can see behind me, there is the roof and there's the panels and they look fantastic. And you might be wondering, I'm sure you are, why we haven't absolutely filled the roofs with panels and there's a very good reason and that is because this property albeit very very new actually failed the structural survey so mcs standards dictate which roofs require full surveys and uh, this one does it's a hip roof and so we recommended a good structural engineer for this customer you can get your own but we work closely with one who knows his stuff and will do a thorough job. Anyway, it came back that the amount of panels we were trying to achieve just wasn't feasible without structural strengthening, which when he looked at it, it was just not feasible at all, justifiable rather, you know, money-wise, because um, you were talking about replacing pretty much all the trusses, which would mean taking all the tiles off and replacing the roof virtually, and unbelievably some floor joists as well um, which is just goes to show they don't make houses like they used to do they so it came to a decision for the customer is this financially viable because after all solar is an investment um, and when you looked at what he would gain from the extra panels as to what the cost would be to um, do all that structural strengthening the finances just didn't add up so to be honest with you what he's got here perfectly suits his annual usage and he's got a great amount of battery storage there as well which we can obviously charge during the night as well as his EVs and use throughout the day. So the system he's ended up with is actually more than sufficient for his needs. Right, so this is Sig Energy's backup gateway. There's a lot of breakers in here, but it's pre-installed like this when you get it. So you only need to go into a few of them, to be honest. This top right-hand side one is your grid supply in. So that's the power from the meter cupboard straight into here first. And you've got the backup breaker down the bottom. That's what actually is the outgoing supply back to the house. Uh, left-hand side here is inverter one, which is the one we're using. There is another two inverter slots that you can use, but we just need this first one here. Earth bar at the bottom. Something that's worth noting if you're installers, you've got to, with these earths, you've got to make sure you've got all these logs on board with you because you can't, there's no terminals to go into. You have to crimp and log them all. So it's worth getting some of those on board if you're going to do one of these systems. SPD on the right hand side with a supply breaker alongside it. And the rest isn't really needed. There's a smart port up there if you need that, but we're not using it on this system. So the top right hand side is the FE1 port. That's just the Cat5 straight from the backup gateway into the inverter. You just need to put an RJ45 plug on each end. And that's the only communication cables you need for the SIG Energy. Everything else is pretty basic and simple. Those large contactors there click in and out, depending on if it's on or off grid. It basically just does its own thing. So although you've got three inverter ports on this backup gateway, you only really need to use one. We've used this left-hand side one, which is a 63 amp breaker. The only thing with this system is it comes pre-installed with the breakers already in it. You're not allowed to remove them and change them for breakers that you need because it'll void your warranty. So what we've had to do, we've gone into a 63 amp breaker with a 10 mil twin and earth but then in line we've had to fit our own fuse board and then fuse down to what we need which in our case is a b40 so there's a 10 mil cable going straight into there the other thing worth noting as well this rcd it has to be a 100 milliamp rcd and then from there we've got our cable going from the b40 into the ac isolator and then to the left hand side of the inverter just underneath that cover goes straight in and then we come out of our dc isolators into these flexicons straight into the side of the inverter with mc4 connectors and then there is a built-in dc isolator switch on the side that needs to be operated as well but we like to put our own dc isolators in to isolate the power from the panels if we need to for maintenance and stuff i think they're a really good system to be honest um, the backup gateway is an absolute dream to install everything's pre-installed in it all these Rubber pack glands and everything are massive. They, they get all the cables in that you need. Um, all the breakers are pre-installed. The software is really good. Uh, the commissioning is an absolute breeze, to be honest. 
and obviously these stack quite well as well. There's similar systems out there. This stacks in the same sort of way. Yeah, it's a really good system to install. Uh, another good thing about the system as well, the backup gateway is there's so much room in it to be able to just wire whatever you need, basically. We've got a 25 mil four core armored there, which the hardest part, to be honest, was just bending the cable in. Inside the actual gateway itself, there's plenty of room to be able to bend cables around and into terminals. Um, if that was a Tesla gateway, you'd really struggle because it's really limited for space in there. So it's a slightly bigger footprint on the outside, but it just makes installation so much easier, to be honest. Aesthetically as well, we think it looks really good. It's a really simple, sleek design. It looks fantastic. All metal as well, which is good. Yeah, it's just a really nice, neat, modern system. So there you have it, the fantastic SIG Energy solar system with full home backup, battery storage, and it really does look the business. Cracking piece of kit. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I promise I will keep more videos coming more regular from now on. Uh, thank you so much. We've been absolutely. <laughs> Why did I do that? Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>